Hey guys, welcome back to the Global Flow series. I am so excited to introduce you today to Oren Harris. Welcome, Oren. Hello, thank you for having me. I'm excited. We've already been having a really cool chat, so yeah. people are just going to absolutely love this. It's all about flow, effortlessness, and maybe a little bit about hustle. So we'll see. I'm really excited about this. But let me introduce you properly so everybody knows exactly why they need to be listening up to this and um i'm just yeah it's gonna be fun all right so oren Ares is a pioneer in the leading edge of human consciousness his primary mission in life is creating heaven on earth a place where people wake up to their true selves and live a limitless life of contribution and fulfillment oren is one of the world's leading experts on flow that's why he's here, the highly sought after peak performance state of consciousness known for its inherent ease, power, grace, and next level performance. Oren helps high performing leaders, entrepreneurs, and creatives tap into the incredible power of flow and have a profound impact on the planet through full expression of their soul's gifts. Despite his impressive accolades and abilities, Oren's real superpower is, his, is simply his love and presence, which reminds people of who they are and effortlessly draws the best out of them. Yay! This is going to be so good. I <laughs> effortlessly draw the best out of me. <laughs> Fingers yes. crossed. Um, <laughs> so I would just love to know more about you, how you got here, and how you discovered flow. Like, give us a little bit more of, of who you really are. Sure. Well... Started back when I was about four. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, I I originally had my experience experiences with the flow playing sports, and the term in sports and athletics is really the zone, and that's really basically when you're just you know kicking ass and um, having an experience that's a bit transcendent above your normal skill level, above your normal experience of yourself. And so I experienced flow. Um, before I ever even got into teaching flow or really even understanding what flow was. But my, my initial discovery of flow really came as a result of discovering that I'm a highly sensitive being. And that came um, the initial catalyst. I mean, there's so many different catalysts and moments of awakening, but the initial catalyst well, for me was I was in a relationship and um with a, a woman that I was in love with and her like a series of events happened at the same time. Her father passed away. Um, we lost a child and just the relationship got really, really intense. Not to mention uh, her, her family didn't approve of our relationship. So there was all this stuff that happened in a concentrated period of time and through the depth of the pain and through the intensity of my desire to like be connected with her and to like make things work. Um, I really started having kind of a unexpected awakening. I wasn't even necessarily seeking out um, personal or spiritual development stuff like that. Um, but at the time, I think I ran into a book. Uh, I didn't even read the whole book. I read like one page and I was like, this is crazy. And the book was called how to believe in nothing. And set yourself free. <laughs> and set I'm yourself free. That time. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's probably not out of print. This was years ago, and I was like, "How how to believe in nothing and set yourself free?" What? And so I read a few pages of this book, and it said something like, "Our beliefs pacify us with the illusion of security." And essentially, what it was saying is that we we've, we've got tons of beliefs and ideas about the world that we've accumulated consciously and unconsciously that shape our world. And so it really caused me to dive deep and inspect like how many beliefs or ideas have I just adopted to be mine mm. that I just assumed were so. And so it was perfect timing with this, you know, intense relationship breakdown um, to really start in this deep inquiry. And at the same time, I came across, um, I think it was Eckhart Tolle's Power of Now. Mm. But what was, inter what was interesting, and a lot of my journey has gone this way, I had already started experiencing what a lot of the books that I later read were talking about. And I think that's one of the things that's interesting um, 
sometimes to people about my story is that, you know, my ability to explain my journey is interesting because there's many things that I experienced just through meeting life head on, just through my experience with life as my teacher and, and diving deep into my own self that I didn't really read in a book that I would later read in a book. So by the time I, I, I saw words to explain things that I was already starting to experience, then it accelerated that transformation. So that's a, that. that was a key, a key period in my life. And I really just started asking those questions that often people don't ask, you know, until mm -hmm. the middle of their life or the end of their life or never. Yeah. Um, that's, that's pretty, that's just like, it's really, part, I love that, like experiencing it first and then figuring out what was going on. And, and I think that happens for people like they start experiencing synchronicities, but they don't really understand or they don't realize that like how like they're becoming more and more aligned because those cool things are starting to happen for them or that they manifested things without really realizing they were manifesting it. I just love it. I love it. Um, that's so cool. Yeah. Um, so yeah. just before we dive further into this, I want to just ask you the one question I've been asking everybody um, because it really sets the, the tone. And what does flow mean to you first? Flow is a state of connectivity with your true self. And when you're connected with your true self, and I mean the self that goes beyond our identity, which is the story of self, which has all of our beliefs, our perspectives, our biases, our judgment, our personality, who we know ourselves to be. The self that exists beyond that, that exists eternally, when we're connected to that true self, we're connected to all of life. And in that state of connectivity, oftentimes, many people when they speak about the flow, including myself, really are talking about like, you know, the exciting thing about the flow is the things that we experience when we're in flow, right? But mm -hmm. flow really is, our, is a natural state of being because all resistance is created in the mind and, and from a level of our identity. So when we're in flow, we're, we're in a state of, res, uh, in a more non-resistant state. And so our consciousness expands and opens up and then we start experiencing life from that perspective. And that's why we're like in the right place at the right time, connected to the right people, synchronicities are happening, the sense of grace, sense of ease, sense of effortlessness. But mm. flow is a state of interconnectedness with all of life. Ooh, I love it. I, I'm taking notes, by the way. So I'm just <laughs> okay. <laughs> I like that. I like. I love it. I, I, just, I do a little write up for the when the interviews go out. Um, it's interconnected with with all of life. Oh my gosh, I love that. Um, now there are a few words you mentioned in there, and I know we we know we want to talk about this. That okay. word. I mean, there's so much here already. I'm like, oh my goodness. Um, effortless. So, yeah. ha, like, I just feel like everybody wants it. Anybody that, you know, comes, you, you, if I have an initial conversation with somebody, like they, they want all of these things and they want their life to be amazing. Sometimes people don't want to put the effort in and the word effortless would, um, <laughs> would be very attractive. But from my, my standpoint, I've had to put a bit of effort in. Um, it's getting easier, but uh -huh. can you explain your, your take on this and what, what that really means to you? For sure. So first of all, putting effort towards effortlessness is a great investment. <laughs> we'll, start, <laughs> we'll start there. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It may take a lot of effort to experience more effortlessness, Ooh. But the, fac the fascinating thing about that is that it's, it's really an undoing. It's really an unlearning. Effort is a state of being. Effortlessness mm. is a state of being. Effort, effort, in the way that I'm using it, is actually friction. It's resistance. And the resistance is generally, there's a, there's a difference between how, how we are holding ourselves to be and the natural order of things and the naturalness of our spirit. And so effort actually is generated on a level of mind or a level of identity. Mm. Effort is like, a, it's like a state of control. You can feel it in your being, right? Mm -hmm. um, because it feels a little tighter, you mm. know? So yeah. like, like for example, so when we use the word effortless, really it's a non-resistant state. Got it. And right. And if you looked at it, if you looked at it energetically, you could look at it like, 
the energy of like desperation versus motivation. So motivation is more effortless than desperation. Why? Because it's not as compressed. But then if you take motivation and up level it again to inspiration, it actually gets even lighter and it's more effortless. Mm. And why is that? The, re the reason being is because inspiration, which is like in spirit, now we've dropped from the mind more into the heart and connected to our spirit. So life is already going to be more effortless because we're not having to use as much. Um, we're not having to be as involved unnecessarily mm. in in the you know in the creation of our own life and so like desperation motivation inspiration inspiration is very light and it's very effortless because there's not as much resistance and the resistance is to the true self or you could say to life right mm -hmm. so when you're in a state of when you're in a state of inspiration in your state of flow life is moving life is moving through you mm -hmm. more more so all of all of the things that on a daily basis all of the computation power and like it takes energy to think, right? And so all of the energy that we use to think and all the energy that we even use to kind of control life, the more and more that is not existing in our experience, the more effortless our life will be. We'll have more energy, more vitality. We'll be able to go a lot longer without breaking down. And so effort, effort's a state of being. Mm -hmm. Effortlessness is a state of being. It has nothing to do with what you're doing. You could be working 24 hours a day and effortlessness or you could be working for an hour and be efforting mm. so you're, you're does that make sense so you're you're, yeah. you're really subject you're really what's happening when you're in effort too is you're only operating with part of your being you're using a lot of your mental resource and your physical capacity which is significantly limiting so a lot of the times we're efforting because we're perceiving that if i don't do this then this won't happen but the thing is if that's not the truth if that's not actually the truth if you've decided that if I don't expend this effort and this energy or control this situation, then I won't get what I want. If that's not actually true, but you've decided it's true, then you're going to be in effort. Mm. You're going to be in, you're going to be in effort. And the effort is actually the friction. It's the resistance to truth. It's resistance okay. to. And so, so that's why like words like surrender really surrender is not a giving up of a goal or a desire. It's actually a letting go of effort. It's a letting go of control. Yes, yes, yes. All of that. <laughs> oh, no, yes, I, yes, I, yes. I, I feedback from somebody the other day and she was like, I said, I said, what was your favorite part? And she's like, every time you say this, all of that, because she's like, it's normally at some like really like aha kind of moment and I was like yes and then I said I, it came out of my mouth again and I was like oh I just said that again so I'm sure she'll have a laugh when she she hears this so yeah, yeah. so effort actually, I, sorry actually I have a, I have a, actually I have a quick example I can give many oh, examples I'd love this, that I'd love that yes this this is a this is a recent example so a really dear friend of mine is actually in town from Sydney she came to my event she was expressing how she really wanted to be in service to her, her, um, her niece, right? So she has this intention in her heart to be a service, right? And then maybe she's got a vision and she's taking action. So she's incorporating, you know, her heart, mind, but she's like, she was like, ah, I'm just trying. I'm trying to get through to her. I'm trying to get through to her. And that energy right there is effort. And I said, well, I said, the challenge that you're having is that you're trying and when you're trying you're not actually sourcing from your power you're yeah, subject yeah. to your perception so you have you have this empathy in your heart and you have this passion in your spirit to be of service to someone but you know if you're trying even if it feels like I just oh, I'm just trying or I'm trying to get through or you know they're not getting it like that energy mm. really 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 means you're seeing through your perception not through your spiritual eyes because if you see through your spiritual eyes you'll see, you'll see truth and you'll be able to perceive on a deeper level, you know, the effectiveness of your efforts. And I said, but when you're trying, you're actually out of alignment with your own desire. Mm. So, so you're, so you see what I'm saying? So that yes. puts you into a, into a state of effort, not to mention it's, it's indicative that there is fear present too, because what you're, you're fearing that if you, first of all, she's perceiving that, she's not reaching her, then she's fearing that something bad's going to happen to her. 
And because she has fear, it throws her into the energy of effort. Mm. Does, does, does that make sense? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, I, and I actually want to just almost pause you because what you've said is if, if people can get this one concept, th- their life will be dramatically, dramatically different. And if they have a business, it will be dramatically different. And, and this energy of trying it's in everything, right? Like trying to get clients, um, trying right. to make more money, um, trying to be visible. Um, <laughs> I mean, trying to write copy. Try, like, I mean, it, it comes into all of these areas, all, all of our like trying to lose weight, but everything, right? <laughs> like it comes into everything. And if, if we can just get this, this beautiful, it's such a profound point and, when you shift that energy in, in all of these interactions on a, on a client, like a call with a new client, then, then every, your whole life becomes so much easier. And I just thank you for making that. It's such a beautiful point. Um, and it's so important. So important. I've never yeah. quite heard like when people say trying, there's fear present. And, and I think that's just, it's such a beautiful takeaway for me because I'm like, Oh, of course, every time. Yeah. And, and it, Another, another, uh, another thing that yeah. might be a revelation, a light revelation around this energy of trying, and this actually happened when I was talking to my friend and she was trying to understand what I'm saying. And I said, but <laughs> you're, but I'm like, but that's what's keeping you from understanding because mm-hmm. when a person, when a person's trying, they don't, whether they realize it or not, they're actually self-conscious. So even in the moment, they might be like, I'm trying to help you. Yeah. They're actually, they're actually energetically more focused on their self and they're, evaluating their own self but in the moment they might think i'm trying to help you but see they've disconnected from themselves and disconnected mm-hmm. from the moment so they can't actually serve the moment so trying is actually uh, uh it's it, it, i think that's one of the ironies that i discovered is that trying often in that context is actually very selfish when you think you're being selfless like i'm trying but join i'm trying i'm trying to help i'm trying to get through to you i'm like but that's why you're not mm-hmm. able to get through because because when you're trying, you're in your head, and it's like a messenger, for example, because I work with a lot of people who are coaches and healers and messengers, and if they ever come to me and say, you know, Orin, this particular type of client or person, like, you know, they put up this wall, and if they ever come to me and I can feel that there is something trying to come through them, you mm-hmm. know, to step up and be bigger, then it's usually the energy of trying. Mm-hmm. And so the wall that they're, the wall that they're seeing now, it's because they might be perceiving that the person's actually putting up a wall. Let's just say the person's in their head. As, but what they may not see is that they're actually in their head. Yes. But if you go back, if you go back into your heart, then your heart can, can penetrate and speak directly to someone's heart. And that's where it becomes effortless again. Yes, exactly. I just had um, like, for instance, a client and she's like, I've met my ideal client. She's amazing. I really want her on my team. And, <laughs> and I was like... <laughs> Stop! <laughs> like, no. <laughs> so immediately she's like, ah, and the energy was like going to flip, and I was like, "Don't flip it! Don't flip!" It. <laughs> and it's like right. that that moment you get the opportunity to to not flip it, or they'll run away, right? It's like it's it's that opposite, right? So I love it. So would you say that so to get out of this trying mode? How do people do this? We have to go into our heart. That's one of the. But how else do you yeah. out of this trying mode? Because it's, well, I mean, and, it's, and it feels so noble and they're, everyone's striving and, you know, trying to make it work. <laughs> trying, trying to make it work. You know, one way, one way is to just ask a question that gets you back to your, the purity of your intention. Because that will get yeah. you back in your heart. It's like, what is your intention? Because if you're trying, then essentially you've already started trying to make your intention happen. So getting back to like, what is your intention? So in the example I gave you with like a client, if your intention is to be of service, then it's, it's, it's not about you. And so if you mm-hmm. reconnect to like, reconnect to like, you know, is it actually important that you make this point or that point, or is it important to serve the intention of the moment? Mm-hmm. And so anything, anything that will redirect you and remind you of your own intention or to take you out of your head, essentially back into your heart, you know, can get you out of trying. I, here's an example. I have a, a client who's, he owns a law firm and he's very successful. And 
he had an opportunity to merge with another law firm and, you know, basically quadruple his business and, and his impact and his influence. And he called me before he was going into this meeting and he was all nervous and what, uh, he was a little bit anxious and he just wanted to check in with me. And so I just did like a quick alignment session with him. But one of the things I said, I said, your energy feels like you, you've put the opportunity on a pedestal and the opportunity would, would be the quadruple business, the impact, the income, the influence, all these things that you're perceiving that this company is going to bring to you. Mm. You separate, you've separated yourself from your original inspiration, which was in your heart. I have something of value. They have something of value. What could we do together? Mm. And as soon as I helped him reconnect to his heart, he went from this energy that was more of like, pick me, pick me, which is going to be trying to, trying to get the, the, the job, you know, trying to get the merger to happen. And he remembered, and this wouldn't have worked if he didn't authentically have something of value to mm. offer that he really, that he really wanted to be in service to this partnership, but he did. And I knew that. So as soon as he remembered that, the anxiousness went away. He got clear. And I'm like, now speak and operate from that place because that's your intention. Everything else will sort itself out. Mm. So he was, he was in a trying energy. And when you're in a trying energy, the other way you recognize it is you have more things to consider. You're more analytical when you're trying. So he's like, if I say this, then this. And this is kind of what they're looking for or this is not what they're looking for. And when you get into that type, that effort, mm. not not what you're saying it's where you're coming from and if you're already coming from a place of trying then that puts you into a state of effort and you'll feel it there's there's tension it shows up in the mind as you know overpopulated mind tension mm -hmm. in the body and tension in the being that's effort mm -hmm. and of course you're gonna of course you're gonna have to effort because you're trying to compensate for because you're disconnected from what's actually true so you're trying to compensate for that and that's that energy of like pick me pick me but that that that's what makes it effort oh it, this it's, it's so beautiful so beautiful and and again this this putting people he, he'd put this thing on a pedestal and i i see it so often in this in this industry as well with different different people and can, can you speak a little bit more about how that shows up for people um maybe in this industry or in their business and and how it how it affects us and how it puts us out of flow by putting people on pedestals because it happens all the time all the time. oh yeah for, for sure so here's the thing like to be in your flow your flow is your connection with your true self that's the place where you're irreplaceable that's the place where you're unduplicatable that's the place where you have the most energy and that is where your power is so when you perceive something in someone else and you put them on a and you put them on a pedestal you basically wind up projecting your power away in an attempt to create power in an attempt to be powerful mm -hmm. you actually you actually you actually wind up creating the opposite and then it puts you into effort and really this energy of trying to prove yourself which is really <laughs> It's not a, it's not a, not only is it not a good idea, but it's ironic because when you're being your authentic self, then your heart sends out this electromagnetic frequency in your spirit to your tribe, to your clients, to the people in the industry. Like that's what your clients want. That's what your audience wants is your authentic power. So it's really ironic when we're trying to emulate or be like someone else or, in, you know, inject something that someone else is doing, then it actually pushes us further away from ultimately the service even mm. you know the certain like like our audi our audience our tribe our clients when you're being your true self anything that's coming through that it synchronizes with their world that's exactly what they're asking you for even mm. if they're not asking you for it on a spiritual level that's what they're asking you for mm. and for me i see, like this is one of my little pet peeves um i think people throw the word authenticity around no I don't mean you absolutely like I think you I think you're one of the few that get it <laughs> which I love <laughs> um but th so everyone's like oh it's you know be authentic be authentic um for me I feel like the piece people are missing is if they're operating from a fear-based place their heart can't be open and therefore they're not being too authentic and everyone's running these fear-based patterns 
yeah. what do you think that's just my take on it, but what what do you think yeah you know, what's your take on this authenticity piece that people are talking about what are they what are we missing what are we not what are most people not getting in this conversation well authenticity you could look at it on levels there's on on, on a physical level or the the most visible level it's just like okay say what you mean mean what you say right yeah but authenticity in a more holistic perspective is actually transparency it's actually isness mm -hmm. and so it has to it has to include uh emotions energy mind like you're a whole being when you're a whole mm -hmm. experience in a moment not to say it's the, the, it's the ultimate truth of who you are, but your entire experience in a moment, when it's transparent, when it is being communicated, broadcast, um, without any alteration, because all alterations come from fear and judgment. So when we hide a part of ourselves, why do we ever hide something? It's because of fear or judgment, right? Which means we're already separating ourselves from ourselves. And so I think that there's a depth to the word authenticity mm. that you're right. A lot of people may not, they may, may look it up on one level and say, oh, well, I'm authentic because, you know, I, 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 say what I, I say what I mean. I speak the truth. And then it's like, okay, so that's one level of authenticity. Then it might be like, okay, well, I'm also being authentic because I, you know, express uh, vulnerability. You know, vulnerability is a huge word and a huge part of authenticity. But, like, authenticity is, is, is runs deep. It's a, it's a deep word mm. to be fully authentic is, is really to be transparent mm. and to, and to, and to, it's like a level where you're, what you're thinking and feeling and saying and doing is all on, on the same page. It's all, it's a, it's a total expression. Yeah. I love that. Um, I love it. Um, so I'm just taking that <laughs> I'm like, these, these are so good. It's so good. I mean, I have to get all of this transcribed because it's, it's so good. Um, so I, there was, there's a piece I want to go back to because, again, I think we, there was so much gold in just that one nugget. And I get asked this all the freaking time. So people okay. are like, okay, <laughs> so I've got all my goals and you're telling me to surrender and not attach to them. And I just don't know what the heck that means and how I'm going to do it. Yeah. And, I, and I think I, th I would love to know your answer to this question. I would love to know how, how you, yeah, why people need to do that. Cause I think it's super important. Um, why do we need to do it? And how the heck do we do it now that we know it's important? <laughs> sure, sure, sure. You know, I, I think that first of all, understanding, you know, like, like we said, understanding what the word effort means, understanding what surrender is and surrender, mm -hmm. as I mentioned earlier, surrender is, is, is a, a letting go of control, right? Cause that's where the resistance is. Mm. And, you know, when you let go of, con when you let go of control, then the, the flow starts to open up, right? And well, 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 well could you repeat the question again? Cause surrender okay. was one part of it. Yeah, so it was about um, the goal. So people, I think it's the slightly more practical side of this because they're yeah. like, okay, so I've got my goals. And I know I'm supposed to, you tell me I'm supposed to surrender. What does that, why, well, one, yeah, why, yeah. why do they do it? And I think it comes back to our conversation. Why do they have to surrender? And, and how can somebody even start to do that on a practical level? Sure. And, and the word I was forgetting that you mentioned was attachment, right? Mm -hmm. Understanding what attachment actually is, I think could be, could be helpful here, mm -hmm. right? Because when you when you are attached to something, you've essentially projected your power into something, mm. right? And this is, this is so easy to do. It's so easy to do. And it's so common that we go, okay, well, here's the vision for my life or the next level of my business. And to, 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 to believe that it's actually separate from you mm. is one of the things that's going to cause you to attach to it, to believe that it's anything other than you experiencing you in this vision that you have in your mind. It's you, it's your own energy, it's happening in your consciousness. And so when you really get that, then you naturally detach. Trying to detach from your goals, I think is, I don't see many people that can actually do that successfully. Mm. Because then they feel like they're trying to lie to themselves or, or convince themselves that it's not important or that 
So it's not necessarily that you need to detach from your desire so much as you need to remember the core of what your desire is. Me, when you connect to that, then you naturally are detached. And so for example, any, any vision that you can conceptualize for your life in any area of your life, really, when you get to that future point, that thing that you're working towards, there's only going to be you still. So it's still, it's still only a version of you that has all is experiencing yourself in this reality. So it's not actually separate from you. So for example, going back to the conversation of, with my client who's an attorney, mm. his attachment to the income opportunity, to the impact opportunity that he sees in this merger, he's actually projected his power into it thinking that it's it that is going to give him the thing mm -hmm. but it's actually it's actually him that created it and if you know that then you'll be less attached it's no, it's no different than when you have the feeling that you go in for a job interview and you know 50 other people want to hire you mm. but, but that but, but the, 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 let's see if i can argue, if i can land this the recognition is that you have accomplished a state of life a state of being a state of consciousness really that has already attracted 50 people wanting to hire you so if all 50 of them went away another 50 would come if all 50 of them went away another 50 would come why because it's you mm. and so you get what i'm saying it's yeah. actually you you may not have done it consciously but through through your life experience through your everything once you've manifested an opportunity that, that opportunity is just a reflection from life of something you've achieved internally in your consciousness, in your state of being, in your mind, and in your experience. And so that's abundance. Mm. And so, so the recognition of true abundance and the source of the supply, the source of the externalized world that is manifesting in this example as an opportunity, the recognition of that naturally has you detach. Mm. Instead of trying to detach because you realize that you can't lose the thing because mm -hmm. the thing is a manifestation and a reflection of your own work that you've done. So you can't actually lose it. And mm -hmm. when you, when you get to know that more and more, then you don't have to try to detach. Yes, yes, yes. I love that. Yes. And I, I think like on a, on a sort of super practical, it's like if you, you know, for instance, on, on, in a client, um, a new client um, conversation, and if you're like, again, projecting something on them or that they are going to give you something, or if you land this client, right. then you're successful. Again, you're, you're giving away your power to them. And it has to be this like idea that, yeah, they're there, but there's also another 50 of them lined up, you know, waiting, waiting in the wings. And whether this one lands or not, it doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. It's it's a, it doesn't matter because... And in an example of a client, it's really easy to see because in the heart of working with a client is service. And really, mm -hmm. your, highest ser your highest service to anyone is whatever is already contained inside you that's meant to move through you into their world. So it's yours. They, like, it, it's yours. Mm. And, whether, and whether, they, whether they can articulate it or not, that's, that's all they want from you. So you don't have to, like, try to do anything because it's like, if it's, if that's the flow, then you're already equipped. You're yeah. already capable. You already have the good. Yes. And I think people don't, they just, yeah, it just, if we could get to that point, everybody's, everything is going to be just working so much easier. Um, I, I wanted to ask you one, one piece of this as well, just because I think some people, they hit, so we're talking about, effortlessness being resistance and um so i uh, let me try and get this so the question so i see some people they're like oh resistance it's either not meant for me or it's therefore not my direction whereas quite often i see resistance and i might see it as just fear or something i have to let go of or detach when, when people come up against roadblocks in this and and when they're maybe in flow how do you interpret them i guess when they come up or things aren't going as easily as people would like like what is 
again, is it coming back to your heart or are there different ways of sort of looking at those situations? There's different ways of looking at it. I think one powerful level of discernment is to first see if like your assumptions are even correct, right? Because mm -hmm. sometimes, sometimes we come up to something that's a roadblock or take like even the word procrastination. I talked about this recently, you know, if you have an experience of procrastination and then you naturally or not naturally put people who are in our tribe are naturally like, Oh, I want to overcome that. I want to, you know, I want to move from procrastination to peak performance. Mm. You know? for, for example, but one, one of the points of discernment taking a step back is to really see, am I procrastinating? Because you'll feel procrastination is a state of resistance and you'll feel mm -hmm. that or, or is the resistance coming because I'm procrastinating or is the resistance coming because I have a judgment on myself and I'm calling it procrastination. Mm -hmm. Judgment, judgment is resistance. And so sometimes we're assuming because we're already in judgment, we're assuming that we're procrastinating. But if a person has uh, any judgment around themselves that they like around procrastinating, like lazy or worthless or anything like that, consciously or subconsciously, then a lot of people create an automatic program that says, if I'm feeling, if I'm intending to do this, and instead I'm not doing it, that that means I'm procrastinating. And that's not automatic. Mm. That's, a, that's, that's actually a projection. To be able to discern whether or not it's actually procrastination in the way that you mean it, you would have to look at it outside of judgment, which means you'd have to like, like not have to, but you could open up and just be aware, being aware of what judgment feels like, then you can discern what type of resistance is it. Is it resistance in the form of fear, which means that, you know, moving through it could be the best thing to do, or is it a resistance in the form of judgment? Mm. Those are two different, those are two different forms of resistance, resistance, because if it's judgment, then, moving forward may not be the best thing to do. Mm. So, even, so even having that distinction of maybe what type of resistance, where is this resistance being generated from, fear or judgment? Another way to look at it on a perceptual level is, okay, right now I'm experiencing resistance. I'm experiencing a roadblock. Is this roadblock because I'm believing something in this moment? So if you feel the resistance, you can also discern or assess it on a mental level and be and look at, what am I believing about this moment right now? And if you make your belief transparent, then you can actually see, like I, I had a conversation with my friend yesterday about, she said, well, if I, if I don't show up, you know, or if I'm not around to help my family or help my niece, I'm the only one that she has right now. I'm the only light in the family right now for my niece. And I, I said, is that true though? Mm. So, so she, she's thinking that the pressure and the resistance is coming from this, this what feels like an insurmountable task which is making her want to overcome the resistance and be more i said but the pressure is actually coming from your thoughts from your perception mm -hmm. your perception is that you're the only one that can help her and if you have that perception that thought that's a resistant thought that's what's making you feel pressure you mm -hmm. see so if you, if you don't know that and you actually think it's this then you're going to go about solving the resistance in a completely different way that's not going to actually lead you to what it is that you want. So having that discernment of like, what is it that I'm believing right now? And you have to slow down to do this. Mm. So you feel the, re feel the resistance and feel any sort of thought forms or beliefs that may be connected to like, what am I believing about this particular moment? So then you can kind of hack into the resistance and then get the, the direction or the information of what, you know, how to approach it or which way to move in. To, what's actually going to release the resistance? Mm, yeah. What, what, what is, is actually creating the resistance in the first place? Yes. That's a finer distinction that I think that a lot of times people don't see, especially if they have judgment on themselves. You know, then they'll just like kind of be like, oh, this is a roadblock and I need to move this through this roadblock. I'm like, yeah, but what, what is the roadblock? Mm. What is it actually? Absolutely. Absolutely. I love that. I love it. I love it. Um, I'm so curious as well, like what, so we've, we've touched a little, we've touched on this effortlessness and trying and to you, what is, 
hustle mean? Especially now that we we're talking more about flow, like, like, yeah, it's throw it's another word that's thrown around a whole lot. What's your take on it? It, it, it is, and I, you know, I've I've had I've had a mixed take on this. But I want to, I will take, I'll, I'll 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 tell you what my take is on it. Right. So, I do think that there is a pure version of hustle. Mm. Right. Yeah. But I wouldn't call it hustle. I wouldn't call it hustle. I would call it flow. But if you like the word hustle. You know what I mean? Hustle is like an energy. It has, it has a, almost has like a, its own swagger to it, right? Yeah. But hustle, for m- most people <laughs> that I experience that are hustlers and that identify with the word hustle, it, it has, first of all, has effort built into it. Mm. It's, it's strongly based in the identity. Mm. And so it's, when something's based in identity, or sometimes you could use the word ego, then it's going to be more effortful because now not only are you going after the goal or the intention, which on a, on a pure level would just be like, I'm inspired to, you know, have an amazing business and make an, an amazing impact in the world. That's inspiration. Yeah. yeah. Right. Where hustle comes in is hustle to me is using more of the identity resource than the than the true self resource. Mm-hmm. And that's why like hustle, when it really is on, on a level of identity, will have a sense of pride. Yeah. Right? And pride, pride is, pride is not based in truth. Pride is based is mental. Mm. Pride, 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 meaning like, like if you have the belief in your consciousness that, you know, um, it's more noble to conquer something or to work hard for something, that's not, that's not truth. That's just an idea. Mm. And then, if, and then, it, but then, if you identify with an idea like that, then you it will become your mode of operation. Inevitably, you're going to have to grind and work harder. So, the hustle, the grind, really is. And I'm making a generalization because I'm. This is at different levels, right? Is some level or measure of resistance? Mm. Yeah. And some and and some level of effort. And I think that identity piece um, is a strong part of it and this is the difference between like motivation and inspiration motivation you know there's it's still you trying to motivate yourself which really means you're still at odds internally with yourself to some degree inspiration Mm. means that you've you've released resistance you tapped into that 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 unlimited supply of spiritual energy that is your natural state and then you're being moved you know um and so to me, like, I, I actually heard this framework before. I didn't make up these words, but I'll give you my interpretation of it because I think it's a great way to explain hustle. And you maybe heard this before. The one of life is happening to me, which is like a vic- your victim to life. Mm. Life, is hap- life is happening by me, to me. Most, that's the hustle domain. Life is happening by me is an upgrade from being a victim because when you're a victim, you've externalized all of your power. Mm-hmm. Every, you're, bl- you're, you're blaming everything but then if you take the power back and you go you source the power of will and you go I can do this you you're still you can you've upgraded yourself and maybe you can succeed a lot more but it's still kind of up to you and you're still giving a lot of the credit to the I that you know yourself to be mm-hmm. and so when you go I know I can do this even if you build a big team with a bunch of people if you're built it from that energy that to me I would I would label the domain of hustle, but the next phase is life is happening through me. Mm, yes. Um, and, and I wrote you, down you, before, <laughs> it's funny because before you said the word credit, I'd actually written it down because um, it, it flashed into my head. And I said, I think it's who wants to take credit. Um, yeah. In my work, I do a lot of, I channel and I do like in my coaching and stuff, I pray before, and then in it, something comes through me. And at the end, either the client gets credit or I'm like, oh, okay, that was weird. Um, <laughs> and, and, it, and there's something happens sometimes in that space. And I'm like, I don't think that was just me. Um, and I think there's a little bit of like, if you, yeah, if you want to take credit for it, it's probably hustle. And if you're willing to be like, something else came in and stepped in here, then maybe that, is that, is that, is that flow? I don't 
Well, there, there's, there's, yes, and there's another level even to that. Right? Yeah, go. What's that? The thing is, if you, if you, if the person who needs to take credit for yeah. something, right? That, as I said, is more of an identity. It's more like they're sourcing power and energy and appreciation and acknowledgement from getting the credit, right? Mm -hmm. and, that, and that's why there, it's very I. Like when, when someone says to me, you know, I'm doing this or I'm doing that, if they're, they're either speaking from their identity, mm -hmm. which is their, their, their concept of self, or they're speaking from their I with a capital I, their infinite self. And when you're speaking from your infinite self, it actually is a we. It actually includes all of life. But mm -hmm. see, if you need to be the one to take the credit, even if you like the idea of more ease and effortlessness, subconsciously, if you need, if you're sourcing acknowledgement mm -hmm. and, 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 uh, and power from being the one who's doing something, then no matter how much you like the idea of effortlessness, you won't let yourself experience it because then you have to be less important. Yes. On identity level, right? And, th and that, so to me, and I'm not saying this is the truth for everyone who's hustling because hustle is a, it's almost like a state of being and it gets lighter and lighter and lighter. So those who are getting lighter and lighter in hustle are actually moving more into flow. And mm -hmm. if you wanted to keep using the word hustle, then you, I would say that hus pure hustle is actually flow, which mm -hmm. means that you're, you know, maybe you're in this energy of focusing and creating and doing, but it's coming from a state of alignment, coming from a state of being. But mm -hmm. for simplicity's sake, for simplicity's sake, we might as well use two different words, hustle or hustle and flow. You know what I mean? <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yes. Yes. I think, I think that's, I love those distinctions. It's so, so good. So good. Um, so to slight, to bring this down to a slightly more, this, I mean, I love these, these conversations because I'm like, I get so much from it and I love the, all the distinctions. On a slightly more practical level, um, if somebody's listening to this and they're like, yeah. holy crap, this is amazing. He's smart. What the heck? Um, how, how do we start, you know, three steps into, or that we can even start to practically bring ourselves into this place of the we, of the letting control of surrender, what are your, where would we even start? Sure. Well, meditation is great, mm. right? And the reason I say, I say meditation, because meditation gives you the opportunity to get beyond yourself. Yeah. So any, any regular practice of getting beyond yourself, whether it's meditation or even being of service can do that sometimes, mm. you know? To, to start to familiarize yourself with who you are beyond your concept of self. Mm. That's key. Yes. Because that, that's what's happening, whether you know it or not, is when you're in flow, you have deliberately or accidentally, or the stars were lined up, you've actually got beyond yourself. That's, that's what happens. That's why when people try to remember, what did I do or what was I thinking? Usually you weren't thinking. You were immersed in an activity and you were being you were just expressing mm. you became what you become you became one with whatever it was you're doing that's why people can't remember like what did i do and that's so people are trying to hack the flow from a level of identity like you know what did i do right what did i do wrong it's like that that doesn't really lead to more flow right and so if you want to practice something look at the common denominator in all flow experiences and one way or another you got beyond yourself and so if you want to be more proactive and practical about generating more flow then make it part of your regular practice to get beyond yourself. And if you, and, and it really has to do with knowing yourself more because we all know certain situations or things that we can do. Meditation is one example that naturally get us beyond ourselves. Mm. And so, you know, you can, you can make that a conscious practice and, and, you know, taking something like surrender <laughs> you know, or even being in the unknown and instead of resisting it, like build it as a muscle. Like if it was a, a mm -hmm. gym and you're building, you're building your intellect, you're building your heart muscles, you're building your emotional muscles, you're building all, like build your consciousness muscles. Mm. Consciously, consciously go after these things that naturally lend themselves to more flow. And so like surrender, you know, and maybe you want to practice surrender and, you know, at your own pace and in, and in activities that you don't believe are going to be that risky. 
or practice being in the unknown, mm. you know, un unfamiliar environment, but do it consciously is what I'm saying as a practice. Because when you cross that threshold of being the unknown and you don't go into resistance and trying to figure everything out, then you're actually opening up more flow. And that mm. happens when people are in the flow, but I think making it more practical and kind of hacking into the flow, I'm saying do it deliberately rather than it happen upon you. And then you reflect back and go, oh, actually wasn't very self-conscious. I actually wasn't really in myself. And then, and then you're trying to get your way back there. It's like, well, then instead of letting that happen sort of accidentally, like move directly into it. Mm. Pra pra practice being in the unknown. Mm. Practice and practice in moments, just sitting with in a moment, like, I don't know. And just not resisting it. Because often that's where the flow opens up. If a person's at a, in a moment in life and they have a question, should I do this, should I do that? And they're trying to figure out the question and they don't have the answer in their mind. You know, a lot of the times what keeps the answer from coming to them is they're resisting being in the unknown. And this goes back to the identity. Mm -hmm. Some people have an identity of needing to know. And, they, and if they don't know, that means that they're not smart. And if you have that operating in your consciousness, then every time you approach the unknown, you're going to go into a state of control and try to figure things out because you're sourcing your power from your knowing, your knowledge, mm -hmm. knowledge rather than from your knowing. And so practice becoming comfortable with the unknown. And you can do that just in a day-to-day, -day, in, a, in a conversation even. Like mm -hmm. someone, you know, so these are some of the things that I'm trying to practicalize things that otherwise would be a little bit more ethereal, like surrender, you know, or like being in the, being in the unknown because these are the things that really, I think, that naturally lend themselves to you being more in, in flow. Mm. can you so I, and it, um, can you be in flow all the time I, I that's a that's a great question and I'm gonna say 99.9% .9 of people who ask me that question and I'm not saying this I feel this in you but the people who desire maybe not ask the question but the people who desire to be in the flow all the time definitely can't be in the flow all the time. <laughs> Shit. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but, but, Damn it. No. From my side, I, I'm pretty sure you, you can't be because you, you might frazzle. Um, but yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm very, but I think your, your definition is slight. It's again, it's that, it's like that slight different perception of what flow is. But I think, your, yeah, let me, let me, let me, your, let me, your, let me. Your state is achievable if you don't think about it and you don't want it. <sighs> what? <laughs> well, no, no, let's no, check, check this out. Check this out. I'll try, I'll see, I'll, I'll see if I can land this one. <laughs> the, the flow, and, and this is going to go a little bit deeper into flow, right? The flow, if you look at it as a state, mm. like even people use the word flow state. I don't use that word very often. A state is like a state shun on a radio. You tune in to 96.5 and you hear hip hop. You tune in to 100.5 and you hear classical type of music. When you're on classical music, the hip hop doesn't go away, but it goes away from your experience. But, mm. but, the, but so, so people a lot of times approach flow the way they approach, they're like, okay, this is the flow station. I tune into the flow station, it's a state. Mm. But here's where, here's where we can go a little deeper down the rabbit hole, but I think that will bring a lot more stability to the conversation, is who you are, your core power. It's, it's like if you go from non-flow to flow, experientially, you're going to be like, this is exponentially more powerful, and of course I want this. Mm. But what's even more powerful than the flow is to realize the person that you, that is consciousness, that's actually prior to the state, that's your core power. And mm -hmm. so n knowing who you are when you're in the flow and when you're not the flow, you're actually more powerful, is, is, is more powerful than even being in the flow. And this is why people get addicted to the flow and they actually fundamentally think they're separate from the flow because what I'm saying is the flow really, even, even looking at it beyond a state, is you are consciousness prior to states of consciousness. 
And mm-hmm. so the ability, the ability to choose flow or not choose flow, that ability in and of itself is more, is more powerful than the flow. And mm-hmm. so for me, the, the, the irony is, is that when you know that, it takes the charge, the positive and negative charge off the flow. The positive charge is, ooh, I want more of that. But the, the polar opposite of that is I don't want the anti-flow. Mm. And this is what keeps, keeps people on, a, on a, a less sustainable roller coaster experience with the flow is because they're chasing the flow and they think that's the quan, that's the power. And it's like, no. Mm. Who you really are is the core power. The, the ability, because that, that's where you have the ability to experience any state of consciousness. Yes. And when, and when, you, when you rest in that, then you can still desire to experience flow, but you don't project your power in flow. Because when you project your power in flow, you actually separate yourself from it, which is what people, these people trying to either grab for it or resist not being in the flow. And so mm-hmm. for me, when people ask me about being in the flow all the time, and, or, or how do you be in the flow all the time? And they ask me that on a personal level. I'm like, I don't even think about that. It does mm-hmm. like, I don't, it doesn't even, that's not even a desire of mine. Mm. Not, not, not to mention if you look at it on a soul level and a developmental level and, and looking at the relevancy of what's going on in each phase of your life, then you're diminishing the value of not being in the flow in terms of ex- your own expansion and development. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, you know, there, there's, it, it's, a, it's a deep conversation and, and the people, people I know that really resonate when they go, man, I just want to be there all the time. Uh, it's a red flag. And I'm like, well, first of all, that's why you're going to be there a lot less <laughs> Yeah, for starters. Yeah. And second of all, it, it's an unstable place because inherent in the desire is already the feeling of separation from it. Mm, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and for me, part of my mission is to help people when they're not in the flow state to manage the other because the other you know three quarters of the, the the situation um to be happier and to yeah enjoy and utilize those moments even better so as when they are in it it's yeah there's yeah there's less need to hold on to it because when you come right. it, it's okay you know and it's and it's not the end of the world <laughs> Which if, if you if you if you keep like moving down that path, it's ironic because what happens is when you don't need to be need to be in the flow, which means you're not grabbing on it, which means you're not resisting not being the flow. When you actually don't need to be in the flow, and you really if you keep expanding that out, the net result is you're in the flow more. And if you if you really want to go to the next level, eventually you get to where you can actually deliberately be in the flow. Mm. That's that's like about putting it in level, you know tapping into the flow at will is an eventual that that is possible and mm-hmm. so it's, it's, it is an interesting question because it's like even though i don't think about it in terms of you know recommending it like as a desire to anyone like the more you awaken to the fact that you are the flow naturally you, you you're just going to be in the flow more mm. but that's I, because you know yourself <laughs> i know right it's like it's such there's so many contradictions within it and so many it's like the more the one you want it, the less you can have it. And yeah, there, there's so many to be able to start to transcend that is really, is beautiful. It's beautiful when you can sort of um, get to that place. And, and it does take a bit of work to get there. Um, and some of these problems, sure. and it's, and it's not, it's not always. Um, yeah. I, I think, I think is a process, right? Like we've all we've got to learn all there's so many lessons to learn within all this. And, um, it's just, yeah, it's so good. And I could sit here. Honestly, I could I think I could talk to you all day about this and just like, what do you think about this and this and this? <laughs> it's so good. I love it. I love it. But just, I think, I think, go on. I think one of the biggest, one of the biggest lessons and revelations is that there's nothing wrong with you. Mm, yeah. Yeah. That's it. I mean, that's, that, that's, that's, that's a huge part of even, you know, the difficult things in life. Part of the, the, the density of difficulty that we feel is not even so much the life situations and difficulties that we go through in life. That's one layer. We might experience resistance. But I think uh, when you're experiencing resistance, it's kind of all-consuming. And so it seems like it's one layered. But a lot of times, it's not even just the, 
the, the day-to-day or the situational resistance that we're experiencing. It's the resistance on top of the resistance, which is the judgment, which is the fear, which is the unconscious thought that something's actually wrong with you. That's the biggest layer of resistance. And sometimes it's on top of that. But if you take that layer off, if you kind of, you know, grow through that, then any moment where you're experiencing a difficulty or, you know, emotional, then you're more like a baby who can pass through an emotional state very quickly because they've not put judgment on top of it. Mm. They've not, they've not created it into identity and say, Oh my God, I'm crying. I'm so, I'm so embarrassed. People are going to think I'm weak. And that's now starting to generate another layer of resistance on what otherwise would be, you know, a more fluid experience of ups and downs of life. And so this, this whole other thing, and I think that what holds the other construct together is this fundamental thing that something's wrong with us. Mm. And we're, and we're trying to then prove that we deserve love, which is impossible to prove because we do and we are love. And so I think that, you know, that for me was a key pivotal part of my, of my journey was that revelation yeah. and having that revelation enough times to where the, the seeking started to disappear, not the expansion, mm-hmm. but the that the seeking, you cannot find what you're seeking for when you are it. Mm-hmm. And so, so I think that thinking that something's wrong with us is one of the biggest sort of thought forms that really becomes this massive part of our journey to just like realize that, hey, mm. none of, not, you're okay, nothing's wrong with you. Yeah. And and that's just, yeah, if we come back to nothing else, that's it, right? Like, if, if you know, if, we can, if somebody can get one little tiny piece from, from all, like, this is, I mean, it's been such a beautiful conversation, but it, it always comes down to this, right? You are worthy, you are enough, you are loved, and, and that piece, when we can stop seeking that through our work, through our relationships, through everything else, then then you're like, like the alignment comes and that's, and that's it really isn't it? So it's yeah. a beautiful point, beautiful point to end on, even though I don't really want to yet. <laughs> but just in, for the sake of everybody else, um, I will, I will. But um, I, I just wanted, where, where can people find you most online? Where do you hang out the most? Um, I hang out most on Instagram and I'm at Orrin Harris. I, I post on there several times a day. I write, I do videos. Um, second to that, I'm pretty, I'm on Facebook, Orin okay. Harris, O-R-E-N-H-A-R-R-I-S on Facebook. Uh, I do Facebook Live quite often. Um, and yeah, those are always juicy and powerful. And also my website, OrinHarris.com. Beautiful. And you have a lovely free gift for everyone. It's uh, a meditation bundle. Can you just tell yeah. us a little bit about that? And we'll have the link linked up just here. Sure. Yeah, I did an infinite being meditation bundle. And it's a series of meditations that really just came through me, you know, in connection with source, in connection with my true self. And meditations for me give me an opportunity to speak directly to people's spirit and bypass the mind and its need to understand and speak spirit to spirit and to activate or awaken intelligence that's already inside of people. So there's a series of meditations that are themed differently. One of them is, uh, is called returning home. And that is especially good for highly sensitive beings who are like empathic and maybe pick up perspectives and energy from other people to just be able to like un- unplug clear and just like reset to your home frequency back mm-hmm. to your soul core frequency. It's, that's a good, thing to do from time to time Um, Mm. so there's one meditation one meditation guiding into that another meditation is called unlimited abundance and once again it speaks specifically to people who are generally very heart-centered and very service oriented and very much giving but are out of balance on their capacity and ability to receive from life from others right so Mm. unlimited abundance is a meditation really designed to bring you into that balance of flow where giving and receiving are equal and they're actually the same thing. Yeah. Um, really important. And um, yeah. And there's two other meditations and there's, I think be 
see the light uh, and flow experience and the flow and the flow experience yes the flow experience is really um designed to tune you into 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 the flow not intellectually not understanding but purely through this energetic invitation because like i did the meditation in the flow and when words are spoken from a state of presence then they actually awaken the same dimension of consciousness inside the listener and that's mm. the thing when words carry aliveness and presence in the moment they become activators they become awakeners they ignite something inside you um just like a tuning fork versus if i was just saying words you know on more on a level of thought or more on a level of something i can pre-constructed so the flow experience is about getting in the flow but the flow experience meditation was actually done in the flow so it, it has that 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 ability to activate flow oh i love that i love that so good so good so good okay amazing thank you so so much for all of this it's just been a beautiful conversation and you're just super smart and i love it and i love your take on it and it's just so considered and yeah i just i really appreciate it and i know everybody that listens to this will get a huge amount from it because um yeah, and if you and if you need to listen to it twice, guys, just to fully grasp it, then I highly recommend you do that as well because it was so good. And um, yeah, thank you again. I just really appreciate it. Yeah, I I, I really enjoyed it, and I I really appreciate you. And um, thank you for having me. It's been amazing. Of course, and thank you, you so much. Go on, sorry. Yeah. Last, uh, sorry. No. Do you have a last thing to share? Oh, I, I was just gonna reiterate what you said like if you need to listen to it again listen with an open heart and don't just listen with your mind mm. because many 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 things um we don't necessarily need to get to fully actualize them in our lives just trust that you know if you're listening with your heart then it can kind of accelerate how much you can get out of any information that's being shared you know because mm. we we're talking from a very you know high level and also practical level but um yeah so if you yeah. need to listen to it again, it's, it's, I recommend that. Yeah. And I, I've had to, you know, some of these concepts, I've had to hear them over and over and then I've had to experience them in person and then I've had to hear it again. And I'm like, oh, okay. And to, to then be able to start integrating it into my life and into my being, I, I, it hasn't just been like one hit. <laughs> Right. <laughs> it, there, there's been there's been like multiple and i think i think that's when you know the, the real the shifts happen is when you're like oh it, i know i get it and you start operating from that space so um yeah yeah i think i think that's slightly underestimated as well sometimes like it's okay to hear even if you have to hear the same message a few times and also because that first time when they hear it they've already expanded a bit when they come back into the conversation from an from that expanded level they can hear something else right exactly you hear something completely different because you're different and you're yeah. already expanded so i just i love that yeah and when you expand to like let it integrate and then really getting your it's, it's almost like our our bodies and our minds are getting on board with our spirit that ex, the expansion happens spiritually and then it will start to infuse with your mind and your body and then bringing that into action and expressing yourself and acting from that expansion now grounds that really grounds that circuit down to the ground and into your life so integration is really important yeah absolutely absolutely oh my gosh this is a whole nother conversation right i'm gonna say i know i know, I know. <laughs> all right okay. stop stop again. Again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. i'm gonna hit the stop button all right um i'm just gonna hit stop <laughs>